Hey everyone. Welcome to Reddit star. Today's video is titled, A 32 male, am in love with my former sister-in-law, 27 female. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's jump right in. I'm finally at a point where I can't stand this anymore. I've been in love with this woman for a very long time, maybe a couple of years at this point, and I'm not sure if I should just kill it or attempt to make something with her. I met my ex-wife, her sister, when I was 23 years old and the relationship developed very quickly and by 26 I had my son and daughter and had gotten married. However, within months of being married my ex-wife had an affair, but worse than that the man she cheated with had gotten her into heroin. After confronting her on this she said she was going to get help, but instead she left in the night. I haven't heard from her in 4 years and last I've heard she's still with that guy and are homeless in Las Vegas. Not sure how true that is, but being focused on holding it together for the kids, I really don't have the time to chase her down, nor do I want to after what she pulled. I ended up getting a divorce in absentia. I did however maintain a very positive relationship with my in-laws after the fact. Every other weekend my kids stay over with their grandparents on that side and they pretty much treat me like a son still, I still go to parties at Christmas and am reasonably liked by the family. Nobody talks about my ex anymore mainly to not worry my kids. My oldest, my son is very hurt by his mother leaving. He's 9 now and I've had to get therapy for him after he told me he hoped his mother was dead. She had been getting verbally abusive toward the end which was when he was around 5 or 6. Anyhow, in the year following my ex leaving, her sister and my her boyfriend had started coming around a lot to see the kids. They knew I worked a lot and would babysit and call it practice as they wanted to have children of their own. My kids loved them and were spoiled by them, which I didn't mind because we all needed a little positivity. They got married and were very in love. However, her husband was killed in a workplace accident shortly after the birth of their daughter. It has been extremely rough and painful for everyone involved as one can imagine. I followed my sister-in-law's example and began to take her daughter to give her time to herself if things got too hard to deal with or she needed alone time. She's been in grief concealing for a few years but she still wears her ring and has told me she can't ever imagine dating again. I talk to her about him frequently and she's gotten to a better place but she's still very much in love with him, I can't imagine that sort of pain. Over the last two years we've been a more constant figure in each other's lives. My kids love their aunt and I have her over for dinner a couple times a week. My daughter and her daughter have become close and love being around each other so they have sleepovers. I've moved on from my ex by this but the idea of dating possibly someone dangerous as their mother has kept me out of the dating scene. I don't know when it happened, but slowly I began to get soft on my sister-in-law. She's a great mom for what she's had happened to her. She's one of the sweetest people I know and her sense of humor always leaves me laughing and happy. Then I started realizing that I'm physically attracted to her. I've always felt kind guilty about it because her late husband was a good friend and since she's obviously is still grieving, so I've kept it to myself. Since COVID started we've been together a bit more because social distancing has made us lose contact with most other people. Nothing romantic has ever been discussed and I try not to flirt, but last week it was very late and after the kids went to bed I made us a few drinks, not enough to get drunk but she decided she'd rather spend the night, so I took my couch. I woke up to breakfast this morning and the four of us felt like the sort of family I've always wanted. She even kissed my forehead which is not something she normally does. I still didn't say anything. But after she left I found my son quietly playing with his toys in his room. He looked upset so I asked him if he was alright. He tells me point blank in the way only a kid can that he wishes sister-in-law was his mother. I sat down with him and asked him why he thought that way and he gave a whole bunch of reasons for being nice to him, that she never yells about anything. He likes seeing her at his grandparents and she draws pictures with him, which I didn't know they did. By the end of it my heart that is already melting for this woman even more wound up. When visiting dropping them off with their grandparents, I tried to breach the subject with her folks to kind of feel around how people would see. I made a joke about she and I acting like a married couple sometimes and they didn't laugh and were kind of standoffish, friendly but either they know something or they disapprove. It's getting too hard for me to ignore or pretend it's not getting to me. I'm in love with her. Either I've got to kill it and find some way not to think of her, or I have to find some sort of way to navigate through this situation and tell her everything. If anybody out there has any insight on how to approach a widow, especially one who was married to a friend, with this sort of intention I could really use your help. And the out posted an update titled, One Week Update I 32 Male, Am In Love With My Former Sister-In-Law, 27 Female. Well we've told everyone, and for the most part it's gone over fairly well. When our respective kids were with my in-laws, Sylvia and I went to go see my parents. 
They've met her a handful of times but they don't really know her too well as my in-laws and my family rarely attended mutual functions. They at least recognized who she was. My dad isn't a particularly sentimental person so I have no idea what he thinks about it, but my mother is on board. She did ask does Jess know? And we told her that I haven't even spoken with her in four years and Sylvia hasn't heard from her in two, that we'd cross that bridge when we got to it. Other than that my folks just seemed happy for me. Yesterday we attended a small family gathering for Labor Day at my in-laws. We knew the reception here would be a little more chilly as they're all also related to my ex-wife. My parents did us the favor of taking the kids to the zoo for the afternoon and ice cream too. We arrived at the party together and of course everybody is wondering where the kids are. Felt like a million things were telling me not to do this, by I took her by the hand and we both explained the kids were not here because we intended on telling everyone that we are now a couple. This wasn't a huge crowd, maybe like 8 people but it really felt like I announced it to a stadium. I don't know how we expected it to go but several of her aunts were very pleased with this. We got some hugs. At first nobody even mentioned my ex-wife. They were just happy because they had all settled on Sylvia just never dating again. It was only Mill that caused any issues. She told the party that she knew we were an item because I was always giving her puppy dog eyes and told them Sylvia talked about me nonstop. She asked for how long we had been dating in secret and I told her only a week. She scoffed and told me that she didn't think starting a relationship off by lying would be a smart move. She then accused, albeit it in a joking manner to the guests that Sylvia and I had vanished at a pool party in June to smooch. Her mother and father asked to talk with us after the party and asked us just how serious things were, and like my parents asked whether my ex-wife knew or not. When I said no and that her opinion shouldn't matter given she abandoned her family four years ago, they said they would be more comfortable with everything if I was to tell Jessica that I am now dating her sister. They are both intensely afraid that my ex will return sober and renewed, make an attempt to make amends, discover that I am now in love with her younger sister and relapse. It sounded to me as if they knew something I didn't and as it turns out Jess has been calling and talking to them for a year now and they just haven't told me, I was upset they kept this from me. Sylvia was very upset too, because not once after her husband's death has Jess ever tried to call her. They show me her Facebook profile, the one she blocked me from and there she is looking pretty normal, not like a burned out husk. I have to admit that seeing her not looking like the junkie she became when she left made me feel a little better and Sylvia too. Her parents kept their contact with her a secret because she is ashamed of what she's done and feels that she's deserved to lose her kids and, and couldn't face them after all that happened. Sylvia's parents gave me her phone number and asked that I please call her and speak with her. I told her that my feelings for Sylvia are real and there is no chance I reconcile with Jess. Phil seemed to nod in approval, but Mill honestly looks like she was hoping we'd fix things. After we left I talked to Sylvia about it, and though we discussed it before, a circumstance where Jess returns, we decided to revisit the conversation in light of these new revelations. I told Syl that I am in love with her, my whole heart is hers and that my feelings of love for her are something deeper and stronger than anything I ever felt for my ex-wife. She ends up crying from the stress of the situation, anger with her parents for keeping secrets, and anger with her sister for not calling her or offering condolences at all after her husband's death. She then admits that she is afraid I might leave her if her sister returns and I assure her this will never happen. It took some long hugs and a lot of kisses to smooth over the situation but by the time we went to pick up the kids, we were holding hands together again and feeling more connected than ever. Oh,